Well, we'll get started then. Hi, everyone, and thank you all for joining us for this Death Blossoms University session featuring Wrecking Ball, hosted by none other than Ventari. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention that due to the way custom lobbies work, we'll have to restart the game after half an hour so we don't get kicked to the menu, so don't panic when that happens. Also, I know it's tempting to grapple around the map, but please don't use your abilities or fire your weapon until it's asked for. I don't know if any of you have ever had 10 <coughs> hamsters squeaking in your ear at once, but I imagine it's pretty impossible to focus. So, uh, don't worry though, I'm sure at the end we can all grapple off the map. So, with that, I'm going to pass things off to Ventari and he can start the map and get the ball rolling. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> the jokes. <laughs> Alright, yo, I guess, um, yeah, I don't know how much of an introduction you already got. Um, I'm a Wrecking Ball main, I've played Wrecking Ball ever since it got released, basically. And I've probably close to 700 hours to it or even more and I was in top 500 the last seasons and my peak is 4, 5, 56 so that was top 13 EU. I usually don't play an A so I can already tell that I have some latency problems but it will be alright for this session. Um, let's just follow me here, I can explain the basic movements and toolkit next to the spawn of Team Red. So just come to spawn please, follow me. <laughs> follow me army of balls. <laughs> <laughs> this looks hilarious. I love this already. Alright, you guys can set up around here the payload and go to the payload, everyone. Nice. Alright, I mean, I don't know how advanced you guys are with Wrecking Ball. I'll just keep it really simple. Um, I will just go through all of the moves, tell you what they do, try to stand still so it doesn't make too much noise because, like, the mech itself already does some noise. Um, so, yeah, if you press Shift, it's like the basic keybinds. I hope you all have the basic keybinds, or at least you know what I'm talking about. So. Yeah, so shift is like going inside the ball, outside of the ball. So what's really about, important about that is you want to be in ball form as long as you're not attacking at all times. Just it makes it harder to hit and you don't have a head hitbox. So you can't be headshot while you're in ball form. That's really important. So if for example, um, if you see a Widowmaker and you want to approach her, instead of trying to walk up to her and shoot from the distance, you can, for example, already be in ball form and she can't headshot you. That's one thing. Second thing that most people don't know is that it automatically reloads while you're in ball form. So if you shoot, go into ball form, it reloads, and then you can get out of ball form once it's reloaded. You have to be in ball form for it to finish the animation though, for it to reload fully. That's another thing. Um, then the E ability, you can all press it. Now you can press it in ball form as well. You can press it outside of ball form. Try it out. Everyone press E. Sweet. So yeah, as you can see, um, it gives you armor. And it's on top of your HP and your armor that you get from other spells, like Brick Armor for example and stuff like that, or the basic armor you already have. What's really important about this skill is that for every enemy that is around you, you get bonus armor. So what you want to do is like you want to press it when you are in the middle of the enemy team. So for example, for me, if I press it here, you can see in my, my shields, I still get a couple of shields, which is nice if there is nobody around and you're low HP and you want to disengage. But if I press it in the middle of you guys, I get a lot more armor and I'm at 1100 HP. So it is a skill that is blocked by shields. So for example, if you have an Orisa in front of you and you press it right out of her shield, then you won't get any additional armor for anyone that is behind the shield um, outside of your line of sight basically. It's really, really important because for example, if you want to jump inside of the enemy team and you press it in front of the Orisa shield or Reinhardt shield or uh, Winston bubble for example, you don't get any bonus armor. So really important, jump into the shields. That's that's a big, big tip that many people really underestimate. And then um, the next skill is uh, grapple. So you can all press right click somewhere, just press it once and hold it. That looks really cool. <laughs> um, no chat, I'm not reading that. I'm just thinking about the things I'm saying. Um, so yeah, you can see that it latches quite far try to roll out as far away as you can, just a bit further away from where you grappled. You can see the maximum distance for the grapple. This is how far you can grapple. Obviously in the beginning when you grapple you can shoot a bit further, but the grapple shortens over time to this length that you have in the end right now. Okay, let's stand still. And there is three reasons why you would grapple basically. So the first one is you wanna get speed to go somewhere you wanna go. So it's like a movement ability. And for this, I will show you something really quick. Follow me here. Follow where Technomad is standing here. Like here. My bad. That's fine. Just stay there. And you can. You don't always have to grapple like here. Because this is like a really long grapple. You see, it gives me a lot of momentum and it swings me really far. 
But if you want to grapple short, you can basically just grapple like here and roll forward. And as soon as you're on fire, you can hold that momentum to grapple really fast like this. You see that? That was a really short grapple, barely noticeable. And it puts my grapple immediately on cooldown. The advantage of that grapple is you have it faster again. Because if I wanted to do the same speed on this grapple, it gives me the same momentum, but I waste some of my cooldown time. So if you just want to use it for movement, grab along walls that are close to you, like this, speed up, and then let go immediately. You can try it out, everyone roll down this path here, and grapple short to this wall, you see this wall here? Come to me. You all see this wall? Grapple to this wall on this side, and try to make it as short as possible when you grapple, and still get momentum, and then let go as fast as possible to reach me. The heel ball gang, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we can try one more time on the other side. Follow the mama ball, exactly. So you can see that if you grapple short, you still get the same momentum as if you had a long grapple. So for movement purposes, it's absolutely fine if you grapple short. Let's try it again on the other side. Go back, follow me. Does it affect how long you're gonna be um, on fire for? Yes, so for example, if I grapple um, further away from me, like here, and I roll the whole time, only when I let go, it will, um, basically, the momentum will fade. So if you just want to get speed really quick, and you don't want to get too far away, it's enough if you do the short grapple. If you want to get like really far away and you want to keep as much momentum as possible, try to grapple or hold the grapple for as long as possible. But usually, from my experience, as, unless you want to engage to like some really far away point, uh, the short grapples for movement are absolutely fine. And I use it all the time when I leave spawn, for example, and stuff like that. Um, so that's one way. Movement, really important for Hammond. Uh, get around the map fast, because one of the tasks for Wrecking Ball is pushing the payload, then fighting, then going back to the payload, then fighting. Like, always being everywhere is really important just because you have the mo uh, mobility to do so. So you don't really waste time if you push the payload, because you can be in the fight in like two seconds anyway. So that's one thing. Um, then obviously, second thing to grapple. If you want to position yourself somewhere, so if you guys move more to this side here, come here to the blue box, yeah, just stay there. Um, obviously a classic is this high ground over here. So if you want to roll out there, you can just grapple high and get there. This is for positioning purposes. And what's really important here is you always want to make sure or most of the time that you are positioned on a high ground. Um, for tanks in general, that's really important because obviously it gives you like some overview of what's going on, where enemy teams might be engaging. And also, for Wrecking Ball it's especially important because you can just jump down and pile dive without using your grapple. And pile dive is also the last ability that we'll talk about in a second. Um, and then obviously the third, um, and one of the most important, I would say, um, reasons to grapple for ball is to disposition enemies. And I think that's even more important in higher ranks, so I would say like, I don't know, Diamond Master Plus, where teams are a bit more coordinated. Um, maybe our coaches, or Trippet, can you go Reinhardt maybe? Yeah. And then I will show you one example of that. I will show you some more examples later, but just to give you an idea. Nice. Which spawn are you from? Perfect. You um, ideally you want to go to the side ground here, follow me here. So usually you would not see a Reinhardt here anymore because Reinhardt is not that strong anymore. But in many ranks you will still see a Reinhardt on the high ground. So imagine you're on the attacking side and you manage to go behind them. So many many instances there is possibilities to boop enemy tanks off their position. For example Reinhardt's and the Rissos are only as good as the shields they provide for their team. So if you disposition them and such slow movement, moving targets um, are really easy to kit for, for your team afterwards. So let's say you guys are my team, like the whole 11 of you, I don't know. And then <laughs> I will boop the Reinhardt off the high ground like this. There is no way that the Reinhardt can get away with that if the whole team collapses, especially if you call it first. So that's the th third reason why you will uh, use your grapple. So first, movement. Second, to get your high ground advantage, positioning, stuff like that. And the third one is to disposition enemies. And dispositioning enemies is really, really, really important. I will show you some examples later that you can try out um, yourself. 
where that I can actually get you like an easy first point cap when people don't expect it. Alright, so the, th the last ability is, um, apart from the ultimate, is Paldrive. I'm not sure if you have ex uh, experience with that one. So what it does is, whenever you're at a certain height, it doesn't mean that you need to be in the air. It's enough that your game registers that you're higher than ground level. I will show you, come with me. F roll up the stairs. Army of balls, don't fall down. <laughs> Nice. Alright, so all stay here. And then watch this. So there is a little trick. Okay, someone fell down. <laughs> so, I mean, we can wait for him. Wait, her, actually. It's only yours. So, the thing is this. With usually what you want to do is like the classic. You can always like grapple, and when you're in the air, pile drive. That's like the classic trick with pile drive. So, when you engage on enemies, you want to grapple through them because it gives another damage, like additional damage, and then you can pile drive on top of them to boop them in the air. So this it doesn't necessarily stun them in the sense that it interrupts abilities, but it stuns them in the sense that they are they can't move and they're stuck in the air for a couple of seconds, where you can quite easily shoot them. So what you want to do is grapple through enemies and then pile drive. What many people don't know about the pile drive, but what's really really important is the fact that you don't have to jump in order to pile drive with a grapple so if you all watch me closely here there is a little trick like this which works because as soon as you go over the edge like this you can try it out yourself try to jump over the edge and then jump back like that find an edge and try to jump over the edge and then jump back like that just like that just try it out you can go up the stairs you don't have Try it first without using the power drive, and then I will explain it how to do it with the power drive. So just try to jump forward and then jump backward, and watch the control key on the bottom of your screen, and you can see how it enables power drive, simply because you're in the air. Oh, so do you guys see that? Exactly, it detects that you are at a certain height above the ground, even if you're not necessarily gonna land there, and power drive furthers your momentum. I can show you a little trick here if you guys watch me. Get back up, okay. So, wherever you jump, with pile drive you can prolong that jump for a little bit. So if I jump like this, and I can't make it there, I can prolong my jump like that. So, same here, I can't make it, I prolong my jump and I can get there. And using that trick, exactly, it's like a little slide in the air. And using that trick, you can jump over the edge like I did before, like this. And then use my pile drive while turning my camera angle 180 degrees. So I do that, and then pile drive back onto the position. And this trick doesn't seem that necessary at first, but I use it all the time. It's so important because, um, yeah, so you have to, you jump, you turn your camera, and then you jump back up. Sorry. I have a question though. That Do was you perfect, have to by the way. your camera, or can you just hit your back button though? You can also hit your back button, but it's really unreliable, I think. Oh, okay. It works, but it's a bit tricky. I saw, always saw someone um, doing it. That was pretty good. Try not to use your minefield, because then others will die. Okay, you can you can try it on any edge basically. Yeah, that's really good. Uh suck cutter was really good. Don't fat finger your minefields guys. <laughs> Yeah, the health packs respawn really fast. Um, I could also clear the mines really quick. Okay, it's clear. Just try not to use your minefield. So yeah, as you can... I don't know, has everyone everyone tried it? Does it work for everyone? It's hard though. It's really hard at first, yes. Oh, I did it! That was really good, that was really good. I saw that. I just a funny vodka. Nice, nice, Roxy, I saw that. Yeah, so what you guys want to do is um, roll out over the edge, turn your camera, and then pile drive back to where you were. Oh. Nice, nice. Crap, sorry. Oh, my. <laughs> Does anyone need help with that still? Nice, you all do it. Did anyone not do it? Y you can roll over it. Uh, but usually I jump as well. Like I jump up. Try not to jump too far away from the high ground, but I will. But it works um, anyway. Is there anyone that hasn't managed yet? I did it one time only. <laughs> okay. Um, how did you? Uh, yeah, just. Yeah, I guess it's something to practice anyway. Oh, I did it again. 
Nice, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite reliable. So I can show you another trick here, for example, if you get all come back to where you were before, like the, the, yeah, the side ground where you guys are, stack up there, watch me on the bridge. So what I, what I can do, for example, is you can roll out, like so, and then roll off, and then pile drive. So not only can you boop them away, for example, that's a really common trick that I use, because in many instances, when, let's say I'm on defense, okay, and then Monkey and Diva come from spawn, and they usually jump on this bridge, right? And then they push into this tunnel. So what you can do is you can grapple here, get momentum, push them into the tunnel, pile drive them by like rolling off the edge like this, and then body block the exit. So you deal a lot of damage to them and you body block the exit so they can't disengage anymore. That's a really important trick um, with the pile drive. So let's talk about the ultimate. Um, Ultimate is a bit tricky sometimes because it used to be really OP because nobody knew how to deal with it. Now it's a bit um, harder to pull off. But in general what it does is it spreads a minefield depending on your height. So if you're really high up it spreads further and if you're really close to the ground it spe only spreads a little bit. So for example if I use it here, it spreads like this. And then once it's ready again I will show you how to spread it further. It shouldn't take too long. So and what it does is it spreads the minefield. And it, they take like one or two seconds to set up, and once they're activated, um, they can uh, they can basically do damage to people. So if I jump higher, they spread further. You see that? The area is much wider. So depending on what you want to do, it's smarter to use it closer or further away. Because if you want to use it closer, like around the payload for example, it's pretty smart. Because if someone gets hit by this mine for example, they might get booped into another mine, and another mine, another mine if they're really close. But if you want to cover a, like a wider area, just spread it out a little bit. You can try it for yourself, uh, find a place where there's not too many people around. Maybe like the red team come with me and the blue team go to their own side so that you don't kill each other. And then just use your minefield and play around with it a little bit. How much damage does each individual mine do? I think 80 to 100, I'm not ex entirely sure. Oh shit! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, just make sure you, the blue team is with the blue team and you don't kill each other, <laughs> necessarily. Oh my God. Yeah, it's 120 per mine, thank you, chat. So it's like a chunk red uh, spam, basically. Yeah. So it's quite a bit, so it can one-shot like the tracer quite easily. Okay. So as you can see, it takes some time to set up, and... Once you're all done... Okay, let's stop it again. Come back to the high ground again. Yeah, that's true. It does wreck a lot of supports. That's what my primary targets are anyway. Alright, get back to your high ground. No more minefields. Okay. Um, so the thing with minefields is this. While they're taking their time to activate, they can easily be killed. Yeah, so they have 50 HP. So if I use my minefield, um, red team, shoot my mine. Shoot them. So they can be cleared, and for example, if you are Reinhardt or if you have shields, for example, if, if I could use the minefield on some of you, um, maybe we can get another Reinhardt again in the Zarya, to sh so I can show a bit. Then I will show you on the Reinhardt. Oh, heal up real quick. Alright, let's get a Reinhardt. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my minefield right on top of the Rhinodus first. Uh, Zarya, let's not do anything right now. Um, and then as soon as you activate my minefield, swing your hammer, okay? Are you ready? Okay, watch this. He can clear the mines. Um, so he can clear the mines by simply swinging the hammer before the mines activate, before before um, they do damage. So, three, two, one, swing your hammer. So, yeah, now they activate it, but before they activate it, um, they can easily be cleared, so be careful about that. So what you want to do is you want to set up your your minefield using your pile drive. So you spread the mines, and then you pile drive on top of the enemy team when they're clumped up, so they're stuck in the air for the duration of the the minefield takes to set up. Make sense? So I will okay. show you with the Zarya. Uh, Zarya, come here. Or oh, works too. That's fine. Okay, so come here. Don't use anything. I will just show you how I do it. So if, if, if the Zarya was my enemy, I would just use Minefield above, Pile Drive, and then you see they basically land in the minefield. 
And it's really really good for like squishies and Ana, Zens, like those are your primary targets. The problem with Zarya is this, um, there is plenty of abilities that can deny your minefield. So what's really important is you wanna keep an eye out for, for those abilities. For example, Ana's nade can completely destroy your minefield. She can clear almost all the, all the mines. Uh, maybe you can swap to Ana to showcase that. Because that's really important. Um, stay Zarya and Ana, I would say. Those are the most important things that can deny minefields. So Zarya, come here. So I will use my minefield and you can walk through the minefield with your shield. Just a little bit. Alright, use your shield and walk through. You can see it actually charges her up. So you want to wait until the Zarya used her own bubble and also the friendly bubble. Because then you can actually deal damage to her and the team. If not, and she uses both bubbles in the minefield, you will only charge her up quite a bit and your minefield will be useless. So wait until she uses the bubbles and they're on cooldown and then use it. And then for same for Ana. Um, I'm gonna use my minefield and when they're set up, throw a nade in there, okay? Set up when they first come out. Um, now. See how it clears a bunch of mines at first? So that's really hard and if she hits the middle of the minefield, that's all your mines gone and there's no value. So if you use it on Ana, for example, and she has no, na uh, no nade, come here, Ana, a bit closer, just don't die to the mines. Alright, I will show you how I would use it on Ana. So if I use it on Ana like this, This is like an insta kill, but if she had um, the nade ready, she could easily, easily um, clear them before they set up. Even before they set up, without taking any damage. So wait out until those skills are used, basically. So Zarya bubbles, Ana nade, and then with Reinhardt, it's a bit tricky. Sometimes it makes sense to just use your minefield anyway on top of a Reinhardt. He can clear with the shield by like turning sideways and destroying the mines. But that destroys the shield, so sometimes it's just worth destroying the shield and pressuring the Reinhardt. And if he lands a bit awkwardly, he can get killed by it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I will share with Reinhardt. Let's try with Reinhardt. Um, so you go, Rein. And then I will let you guys play around with the minefield again. Okay, so I will use my mines on top of you. You hold your shield, and then you will just turn around. Okay. And then walk through the mines with your shield. So you can see that it pressed the shield quite a bit because it's 120 damage per mine. But he can clear them quite easily. So that's really important that you are careful about that. So if the Rhine shield is low and the whole enemy team is clumped up, you can quite easily use them anyway. And it will like, basically destroy the whole enemy team. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily wait for the Rhine shield to go down. Yeah, so what I see also, another thing. Um, Pile drive can get blocked by Ryan shield. I will show you how exactly. Ryan, come here. Hold your shield up. If you jump in front of the shield, nothing happens. And what I see all the time, which is quite funny, every time I jump in like above a Reinhardt and he expects a pile drive, I don't know why. Even in top 500, people drop their shields, and it's so bad because it actually doesn't prevent any damage. It just makes sure that I hit everyone with my pile drive. So you can block pile drives by with your shields, Orisa shields, Winston bubbles, Reinhardt shields, all of that works. Sometimes even Zarya bubbles depends on how to use it. So use your shield again. The shield has to be touching the ground, right? Mm, yes, yes, yes. If you, I mean, it depends. There is awkward angles, but in general, yes, the idea is that you have to touch ground. Because if I use it here, that was a bit too high. Come, come <laughs> a bit forward. Like those things only happen, you know. Like, <laughs> so yeah. As soon as I touch through the shield, he will get uh, pooped up. Okay, use your shield again. I can show you also here. Um, shields, my defensive shields, I only get a bunch. And then inside of the Reinhardt shield, after they're used, I get more. So that's really important. Always, when you engage on tanks, always jump into them. Don't be afraid. And then make sure like you know that the healing also doesn't go through shields. Like Ana healing, for example, shots, nades. So when you engage through Reinhardt shields, always make sure you can get behind. You go out of the shield again, so you can get heal and stuff. But when you engage through the shield. Um, I will let you play around with the minefield a bit, just to try to set it up properly. Like with the strategy where you spread it, and then part of it. Just to get the hang of it. So everyone, find a position on the map where you don't disturb others, and then grapple somewhere. Use your minefield, and then pile drive on top of it. And what also works is you can take some time in the air before you pile drive. You don't have to do it at the highest spot. 
there's quite a long leeway until you land uh, land on the ground again for you to pile drive. Just play around a bit. So the higher you're in the air, um, the more you spread out the minefield, and the later you use your pile drive, the more times the mine have to set up. Nice. All right, let's get back to the high ground. Yeah, just get a health bag. They respawn really fast anyway. Alright, I need one red ball to come here. Perfect. Alright, so there is some interaction between wrecking balls. Um, what you need to keep in mind is this. Generally, you don't want to contest enemy wrecking balls because you can't really kill it. They can just disengage. But the thing you need to do, or that you should do, if the enemy wrecking ball uses ultimate, uh, you can clear it with your as long as you have speed. So by that I mean when you're on fire, when you grapple somewhere. But keep in mind that the minefield slows you down. So the first couple of mines you hit won't deal any damage to you. But after a couple of mines, you will be slowed down enough that you're not longer on fire, and then they will actually do damage to you. So. Use your minefield, I will show you how that works. Alright, so if I go through it with fire, you see the initial ones didn't deal any damage, but after like two or three mines, I get slowed down and take some damage. But in general, you can clear them. See, I took no damage the first three mines, and I could easily clear them. Wait, wait, wait. Are you invulnerable anytime you're on fire, or is it specifically when you're running into mines? Um, you still take damage, but against mines, um, you're invulnerable. So that's really important about that. Okay, now that we cover basically the, the, the movement and the toolkit, um, I will explain what I think Wrecking Ball's job is, basically. So, I mean, there's a bunch of tanks in the game. Um, there is a huge debate on whether Wrecking Ball is a main tank, off tank, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much, uh, as long as you know how to play it and who to play it with. So. Contrary to most other tanks, let's say the classic shield tanks, Orisa, Reinhardt, Winston, they all have their own roles um, and they're really team focused. And the advantage of Wrecking Ball, especially in lower ranks, is that you're really independent from your team because you're so fast you can easily take health pegs. So what you want to do as a Wrecking Ball, because you're so fast and you can easily dislocate enemies, is uh, create as much space for your team as possible. So for example, a Winston jumps on high grounds, for example this, this high ground here puts a bubble down and basically denies all of his high ground with his gun and also with his shield. Wrecking Ball can't really do that as easily because he doesn't have a shield and he's also not as good as pushing card or like staying on the point as other tanks because for example Rista can easily stay on the point, put put a shield down or in a payload and doesn't take too much damage. As a Wrecking Ball it's a bit harder so I would personally like to play Wrecking Ball um, with a bunch of different comps. So right now what's really viable in, in ranked, for example, I'm not sure if that works for all ranks, but from my experience in, uh, in, in GM, for example, um, triple DPS, double heal and wrecking ball works because uh, it's basically like a huge deathmatch on the map. The wrecking ball jumps in, tries to draw attention, dislocate enemies, and your DPS take different angles and attack the enemy team. That's one approach. A different approach is more of a bunker comp. Um, for example, on Junker Town, what almost always gives me like a five minute rest time on all three points on Junker Town, which is pretty ridiculous, is a comp that involves like Bastion, Orisa, Hog, um, Baptiste, like the ba classic like Bunker Bastion comp for Junker Town, where you set up on the card and then just basically camp the card with Bastion, trying to kill everything around. And the role of Wrecking Ball in a setup like that, where you already have people that protect your team is to create as much space as possible. So for example, if the Orisa and they're all set up on this point here and they're about to go around the corner and they will take a lot of damage, 
um, you as a wrecking ball would jump up there, pile drive all of them, and draw attention away from your team so you, they don't take as much damage from the shield. Um, and they can easily kill everything because they can't focus you. If, if they ignore you, basically, you can play with them as you want. And if they don't ignore you and they go for your shield, you can. Uh, yeah, if you, wait, if they don't ignore you and go for you, your team has a lot of um, pressure abilities. One sec, we need to restart. Um, yes. Okay, let's go to the lobby real quick because we need to restart. Okay. But I can still expand the rest. So, yeah, setup wise, there is different set, um, a bunch, I would say. The most important is like classic dive setups. Does ever, do, you, do you guys all know what dive means exactly? Or should I explain it real quick? I think you should explain it anyway. Yeah, okay. So the idea of a dive setup is that you play fast heroes. They can reach a certain point of the map um, via, via like blinks, jumps, or different engagement mechanisms. And for example, back in the days where Hammond wasn't a thing, you would have... Um, Diva and Winston to dive because they are really mobile tanks and what they do is they will call a dive you good to go all right then we'll go back into the game um, you would call a dive on a target for example and you would say three to one dive let's say an Ana and then the both tanks preferably with a Genji a Tracer or any other fast DPS would jump on the call target and try to kill him as fast as possible so you don't necessarily camp the payload or try to approach slowly but you go really fast um, and try to burst down targets basically. That's dive setups. Contrary to dive setups, there's like bunker comps and goats and whatnot. And a bunker comp is mostly with Orissa. They play really slow, they play around the objective, they try to win the shield battle. Um, and depending on what comp you play with, there's different playstyles to hamster. So if you play a dive comp, you wanna lead the dive. You call the target. So for example, if I'm on attack, we push the card around the corner, and can we get an Ana or a Mercy maybe? Uh, Ana and a Widowmaker, I mean. That would be perfect. Preferably a Widowmaker, I think it's easier. Because you can grapple up there faster. Nice. Uh, can you set up... Wait. Um, actually, no, let's set up, set up here, on this side here. Nice. So, if I was to attack this point, and usually, as you see, where the Mid Widowmaker is, there's a lot of people um, standing there, usually with, like, you know, maybe my shield or something. So, if I was playing with a dive setup, where you have a Winston on my side and maybe my Tracer or a Genji, I would tell my team what my plan is. I would say, okay, we want to dive the box top right when the card is around the corner. So, we push the card. And then I tell my team when I dive. So I say three, two, one, dive. And then you dive together with the Winston on the Widowmaker. And you lead the dive. That's when you play dive. If you play with, with like the classic goats, which is like a bunch of tanks, so like Reinhardt, Zarya, Lucio, Brigitte, Zen, um, Diva, that was like a classic goats comp. And instead of the Diva, you play Ball, for example, and you already have a shield tank like a Reinhardt, and you already have a Zarya, for example. You can play Wrecking Ball more independently from your team, kind of like uh, like a DPS. So you let your tanks do their tanking stuff, whatever they want to do, and then you can try to go for solo picks. So if you see a Widowmaker, for example, and you have a Reinhardt and a Zarya in your team, they really can't contest the Widowmaker. So your job is to reach the targets that are out of reach for for most of the immobile tanks. Same if you play with Orisa Hog. Um, ah, you guys have to tell me if I'm talking too fast, because I tend to do that sometimes. Or if you don't understand me, because English is not my native language. But if that's fine, I will just stay like that. You're um, doing great. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> um, give me a sec, I need to take a sip, because my mouth is getting dry. From all this chatting. Alright, so and I will show you a classic engage, how I would go about killing a Widowmaker, for example. So what you want to do on almost all squishes is grappling onto the position of the squishy and then try to land as close to the squishy as possible. So the closer you land, the more damage you deal. I think they didn't change that because it used to be different in the past. So try to land really close and when they get booped into the air, basically shoot in an upwards motion following wherever they, they get booped, okay? So it's similar to the Doomfist Punch. Them, right? Yeah, so you pile up onto them after you grapple above them and when you hit the pile drive, try to... And 
Obviously it takes some practice, but it's quite reliable to go for a lot of headshots. Because it, it sounds like, oh yeah, just go for headshots, but it, it's pretty reliable. So when you get used to the habit of trying to aim for the head as soon as you pile drive somebody, you can get so many solo picks, like Zen's are one-shots, and McCree's a one-shot, unless he stuns you, uh, and Ana is a one-shot. Um, let me see, what else? Hanzo is a one-shot, Widowmaker, Symmetra, like all of those squishy heroes are definitely one-shots, and I can show you how I would go about like, hitting this Widow, for example. I would jump on her. And I would track her down, like that. So ideally, you want to jump in front of her, that's what, what I made wrong here. What I did wrong, because if you jump behind her, then obviously it's a bit harder to hit the head. But if you jump in front of it, I can show you again. Um, also with the Ana. Ana, can you... Yeah, you can stand there, it's fine, it should be right. So yeah, I jump on the Ana. Yeah, so exactly, but that's also a good example, because... So... That's one of the reasons why you want to wait out certain cooldowns. So that brings me to the next point. Some heroes are harder to attack or engage on than others. So what I see a lot of Wrecking Balls do wrong is just simply, like without watching or paying attention to cooldowns, jump into the enemy team, pile driving, and then getting away or not getting away with like low HP, not really providing any value for your team. So for example, if you jump into the enemy team and you get stunned by a brick that is around, that's really bad. If there is enough coordination, and the higher up in the ranks you go, there will be coordination, the harder it gets to disengage from such a position again. Same if you get slapped, antenated, McCree flashbang, there is so many things that could shut you down, or like a somber hack, for example, but that's a whole different story. So when you engage, you can either do it because you want to basically draw out those cooldowns from the enemy team, in the sense that you jump in, they use their cooldowns on you, you know that you can get away and survive, and then your team can engage knowing they have no cooldowns left. For example, if they use an Arnonade on you, that's a lot of healing missing for their team if she doesn't have it ready in time for the rest of your team to attack. That's one thing, or you engage in order to kill them, but then you want to make sure they use their cooldowns. So if I jump on an Ana, for example, that doesn't have Nade or Sleep, that has to be a guaranteed kill. That's a guaranteed kill. Even if you don't get the one shot from the power drive combo, you could just hunt her down because she won't be able to heal up. Oh. A classic fat finger. <laughs> so it sounds like even if like if you're not playing Hammond and you have a Hammond on your team, it's very beneficial to call out when the enemy on is used her grenade. Yes, for sure, for sure. Okay. And the high up and that this is something that isn't probably appreciated as much in lower ranks. But um, those things matter a lot in higher ranks, so Get into the habit of, of doing those things, even if people say, oh, we don't need to hear that, or that's annoying. It's really, really important. Like, For example, when I engage, and they sleep me, and they nade me, and I know we have a Tracer or a Genji, for example, that usually struggles to kill an Ana 1v1 against especially good Anas, um, I say, okay, Ana, no nade, no sleep, let's go, kill the Ana, for example. So that's a huge thing. Also, if they say that, then I can go on them, and knowing that I have no cooldowns, and it's an easy kill there. Um, yeah, so you can play around cooldowns, it's really important. Alright, before we talk about how to play around counters and what the counters are, are there any questions from you guys? Yeah, I have a, I have a question about one of the abilities. So I understand that like um, Hammond does some damage um, just with knockback, but is it true that that damage only comes into play when he's like on fire, so he has enough speed that he's on fire? Exactly. Does... If okay. you just roll, so you deal no damage. So like when you're on fire, what are the things that are happening? There's a knockback, there's some oh, yeah. damage dealt, there's um, apparently some vulnerability to mines for a couple seconds. Like mm -hmm. what else is it involved with that? Uh, that's a good question. So yeah, it's basically all there is. I mean, once you grapple and you're on fire, you can knock back enemies quite far actually. I will show you some really fun grapples later where you can abuse that. Um, you don't take damage from mines. I think you can also roll through a couple of other things, but uh, in general it's just to clear mines, the rest still does damage to you. So don't think you're invulnerable when you use it, because um, then you might be a bit, you know, you know too risky in your playstyle. But that's pretty much it, so like when you grapple, it gives you speed and it pushes enemies away and it deals a bit of damage, so it's a really quick way to charge your ultimate. For example, if the whole enemy team is stacked around each other and you roll through them, what I like to do is roll through them in order to, like, actually through them, like through the whole team behind them, because then they have to decide whether they want to face me or they want to face my team who's in front of them. And especially in ranked and especially in lower ranked rank, in lower rank rank, there we go, um, this, the coordination might not be there. So for example, 
in some top 500 games, if I roll through them, they completely ignore me and they still focus my team, which is pretty bad because then my team is missing a main tank and they're playing 5 versus 6 basically. But in lower ranks, it might be the case that some of them try to chase you, some of them might hold the front line, maybe the Reinhardt even turns around to protect his team, I don't know, like stuff like that might happen. So creating chaos is really the key to playing an effective Hammond. The more resources you can draw away from the enemy team, and for example, if two people chase you, it's technically, not, not exactly, but it's technically a 4 versus 5 for your team. I mean, obviously they're missing their main tank, so it's not as advantageous as a normal 4v5, but you get the point. Like, as many people, like, the more people you can draw away, the easier the fight gets for your team. So, in some instances where you play Hammond, you will, your DPS will have more space than they would ever have with a shield. But that doesn't mean that Hammond is always better than a shield tank. It depends on the situation. So that's really part of how to play Hammond. Um, I will show you some advanced grapples or the classic grapples for some maps before I talk about like counters and, and matchups and how to approach in some um, maps. So we come down to the card guys and then we can try a bit more of an advanced grapple. So, yep, yeah, go on. Um, so what is your opinion of like Hammond's like grappling around like an objective and then just kind of sitting there and swinging. Oh, like, uh, you mean like the Beyblading kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, so I can show you on, on maps later where that is possible. So in general, keep in mind that your guns actually deal some decent damage. So in some matchups, your guns are stronger than some ta other tanks, for example. So if you fight a D.Va, for example, if you fight a medium range, you still do a lot of damage, but a D.Va doesn't do a lot of damage. And especially the closer you get, and especially for headshots, the Hammond damage is quite high. So, a grapple does like 50 damage. Shooting somebody at the same time while you try to swing around and hit them like once every 5 seconds, your guns will deal more damage. But if you see that your whole team can't really contest the point and they're busy fighting and you need to stall the point, but you know they will focus you down, try to be as evasive as possible by grappling around the pillar and then like swinging around Beyblading basically, just to stall some time. I wouldn't necessarily use it to to deal damage, like that's not the main point, and it feels like you're doing a lot because you pooped them away, but actually you're not really. So <laughs> that's one thing. And um, so yeah, if you try to cap the point and you are definitely outnumbering them and you have the advantage, then try to build on this advantage by shooting people down, you know, instead of like, um, yeah, instead of like grappling around the pillar, just Beyblading the whole time. Um, also, sometimes it's worth Beyblading around the payload if there is like, um, environmental kills possibilities because you might just push them into the abyss for example um, at the last point of King's Row I can show you that but we'll get there when we come to that first um, what distance is well, I don't know exact distance but you can try it out for yourself in the in the you know training area it has quite a significant drop off so what I wanna do is I'd never wanna try to shoot people on a high distance it feels like you're doing a lot but you're really not doing that much damage so, for example, against Winston's, instead of trying to fight them at a distance, I will roll right into them, even if that means that I take some of their, like, their gun damage, because my damage is higher, especially if I aim for the head. So, if you take the direct duel with a Winston, for example, if you're close ranged, you will win the duel. For example, against D.Va, it's a bit harder, because D.Va does a lot of damage close range, especially since you're quite an easy target to hit. So, what you want to do is... Um, fight D.Va more in medium range where you don't have too much damage drop off but where sh her damage drops off significantly. Um, and the same for some other targets, for example, what's another classic you want to fight on medium range? For example, McCree or May, those are really important targets you want to fight on medium to long range because McCree damage drop off is not really high but the flashbang can um, definitely um, provide some issues. And for May, if she gets in range to freeze you, that's really hard. Uh, one second. Yeah, also, yeah, Reaper, a really good um, example as well. Because Reaper damage drop off is quite, quite high. So, as long as you're in medium range, you can actually quite easily duel a Reaper. But try to keep that range on all times. Um, yep. Sweet. Alright. I'm a bit distracted by my chat, but I will try to stick to this now. Okay, I will show you the grapple now. Uh, come back to the card a bit so I don't push anyone. So what you want to do is the grapple that I did earlier is like grappling to this corner here. It doesn't really matter where exactly you grapple. If you grapple higher, you swing higher. If you grapple lower, you swing a bit lower. 
But somewhere around there, you wanna grapple and then swing up to the box where I was standing earlier. Don't use your pile dive to swing up so you don't kill anyone else. One after another, swing up, try to get up there. Try it over and over again. Get a feeling for the grapple. Even if you don't get it at first, try to get a feeling. You can manipulate the grapple while you're grappling the direction. You can try it out. Try to land up there. If you land it up there, just uh, fall back to the other side so I can watch the other people that haven't tried it yet or haven't managed so I can tell them how to correct it properly. Oh, sorry. Maybe like blue team first, if you all manage, then the red team so you don't push each other away. Nice, nice blue team seems to get the hang of it. And trust me, like the, the grapple, getting used to the grapple is the hardest thing at, thing at first. Once you get the hang of that, you can apply it to almost all high grounds. Like there is not a single high ground that you can't reach with Wrecking Ball so far, that's my experience. You just need to know how and where to grapple and once you get used to it, that's like um, something you do all the time without thinking about it. It's like muscle memory. Let me watch the other ones while you're grappling. Yeah, skip. So a trick to grapple there, stand still for a second, for those of you who haven't managed. So if you grapple here, you can, if you roll left side first, what do you want to do? You do this, okay? But if you roll, if you roll straight at it, like close to the corner like this, you get more momentum to the, more and more height, you know? If you grapple left side, you swing outwards, and if you grapple close to where the grapple latched, then you get more momentum and as a more high ground, I would say, or more height. So don't try to swing around it like this, which also works, but it's a bit tricky. Try to swing forwards and upwards. And you can also manipulate the direction a little bit by swinging, by using the left key while you grapple. Yeah, this is much better. Perfect. Yes, very good, very good. And as you guys see, even if you bump against the wall at first, it still pushes your momentum a bit so you can reach more height as well. Nice. Did everyone manage? More or less? Yes. Nice. Okay. Um, I will show you a different trick on other maps just so we can... I don't know how much time you guys have, but... Um, I have time, but up to you. I can show you more more grapples. I'm down. <laughs> There's still ten minutes as well. So. Alright. Like Alright, maps. I will show you something really cool on um, Nepal. I hope we get into the right map. Please, Sanctum. <laughs> yeah, this is something they need to fix, that we can choose the King of the Hill map we want. You can, actually. Yeah, there's an option for it now. Yeah, is it? Wait. Yeah, I just I can't remember where it is off the top of my head. Cause I haven't found it yet. It's, Try again. Select like between like one, two, and three, so you don't actually know which map you're getting. You just. <laughs> oh great. <laughs> yeah, so much better. <laughs> I mean, okay. Wait, let me try a couple of times. That's village again, All right? Back to lobby. Techno, how do you have a level four endorsement? Like, oh my That's pretty God. impressive, actually. How? I play a lot of Moira. <laughs> Bitches love my heels. <laughs> I give them big oh, you're, you're, you're one of the Moiras that actually heal. That's why you're level 4. <laughs> Sanctum perfectly got it. Finally. Alright. Um, I need an Orisa and a Hog. Or, or, I mean, yeah, Orisa Hog would be perfect. Maybe... One of the Hammonds can swap for now. Tripit, you can go Orisa maybe, and then one of you guys can go Hog. It doesn't matter because I can show you the Hammond grapple regardless. Just come to the point. Turn not to fall off. Alright. So I talked about like this positioning. I don't know what the English word is exactly. I will try to use this one. Just basically pushing away enemy tanks. Um, yeah, Orisa is also walking up. So yeah, so Hog Orisa, stand right there. Yeah, a bit more to set. A bit more to me. 
closer, closer. Yeah, perfect. So put your shield Orisa. Yeah, so what usually happens on this map is that Orisa Hawk walk up, right? And then you have this classic Orisa Hawk battle. But if you're Wrecking Ball, you can you can either decide, do you play Orisa Hawk as well and you try to counter it and try to play better than them? That's one way to deal with that combination on the point, and it's very common. Or you go Wrecking Ball, and I will show you exactly what you can do instead. Follow me, guys. Follow me here. Do you want the Hog and Orisa standpoint? Yeah, stay there, stay there. So here you see through the window where they are, right? Mm -hmm. And this side already makes me really happy when I play ranked because I already know what's coming. So you see through the window where they stand. So first you want to check where the enemy team is on the point. And when you see they're at a position there, what you want to do is jump down here. Do you see where I am? Jump down here. And then you ledge onto here. No. This side or this side works. And then you can just roll like this. That's it. Usually it's Orisa as well. I don't know how I managed that, but you get the point. <laughs> yeah, you get the point. And yeah. <laughs> that's fine. I live. <laughs> yeah, also, that's a little trick. If you get booped off, you can save your life. So if you if I fall down, for example, like here, all come to the edge, all come to the edge. Don't fall off. Careful. Yeah, so if I fall down like this, I can still, like, grapple myself up there. I mean, if you're in panic, you might forget or you might not hit it properly. Because if you reach a certain depth, uh, then you might still die, because there's, like, a certain point where you die regardless. But in general, you can get out of there. Even if you get stuck, you can swing a bit. But sometimes, it's worth just, you know, giving up and dying, because you might not get out of there again. For example, there's an awkward grapple on one side where you can't get out of there again. So yeah, right. I, have, I have a question. Sure. Um, you know when we're in this cubby and you said that you know we latch onto this wall to boot them off. Yes. Um, is there a reason why you wouldn't recommend latching onto the ceiling up here? It also works. Okay, but I'm just okay. Right, it, it it doesn't matter really. Like you see all those like fancy grapple video videos on like YouTube where they show you which area you can grapple onto, but in general it doesn't really matter at all. Oh, um, all right, Arisa Hall, come back to the point. Same position again. So, what? another trick, by the way, with your shift, when you get out of ball form, it stops your momentum automatically. Oh. So, if you, if you grapple somewhere, let's say you use this grapple where you poop them off, and you go to the edge, in order to make sure you don't get pooped off the edge yourself, or you fall off, you can, before you reach the end of the edge, you can also get, just press shift and stop immediately. So, I will show you what that looks like. Get away from the point, Rikik. So, you grapple, you get full speed, and you shift, and you stand still. That's really important. Or another thing you can do is, if you don't manage to stop yourself in time, you can do that. And then you see, you pile drive back. Lol, there is no way that happens again. Okay. Alright, that's really luck. I mean, I'm not sure if that's lucky because you can't get back, but it's, <laughs> it's really... <laughs> oh, you can get back, I guess. Nice place. <laughs> nice Assassin's Creed wall climbing. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, okay. I mean, I created like a grapple video for YouTube. Uh, I'm still working on it, and stuff like that has happened all the time, and has never happened in ranked. So it's only when you try to show it, I guess. But yeah. So, so basically, if you fail your grapple and you you roll over the edge, you can still pile drive back onto the point. Um, so here, you can do that. See. I would have fallen off, but instead you can battle drive back. So getting used to that momentum is really key. And also, for example, if the Risa is here, come here, Hogo Risa, come to me. Let's say you want to grapple onto, or you want to pile drive them. You can just simply roll over the edge and then pile drive back, and you can hit them. And this is why it's so so important to learn this uh, pile drive trick, because, for example, if you're on a ledge um, with Widowmaker, for example, if the Widowmaker stands up here. It's really awkward to get a pile drive on her, unless you do like this little trick, you know? Like how are you gonna get the height with pile drive? Maybe like this, but it's a bit weird, you know? So instead you can just do this. See that? And this is especially important for like bridges, for example, um, keep in mind... Yeah, for Gibraltar, for example, the first bridge. There you can use it. And um, yeah, so whoever wants to try out... Pull people off. 
you can uh, you can go for it. <laughs> Just try to try to push the hog on the Rissa if you're blue team. You can try to push me off if you're um, red team. Yeah, you have to let go of the grapple as soon as you get the the speed. Let go, and then try to stop yourself before you get um, before you fall down. Hi there, Satisfa. Finally got you, Trip. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I got a really cool play of the game um, with that trick where I got three people booped off, got my mine filled, and then killed two more. I can show you after this. So yeah, it's you definitely get play of the game if you get three people. And I played bronze to top 500 a while ago, just to try it out. And especially in lower ranks, a lot of people stack up on the point and they don't pay attention to you at all. So it's very, very common that you get like three or four people booped off, especially at this point. So you can literally just boop them off, go back to the health pack room, fall down again, boop them off, and do it over and over again. And this wins so many team fights. So yeah. So what I like to do is tell my team, let them set up on the point, and then I will try to boop them off. Alright. I will show you another instance where that is really, really important. Let's go back to the lobby. Um, settings, and then maps. And I will show you one where this actually wins the first point almost always. Alright, we need um, yeah, cool. a Risa Hog again. All come to the first point. Hi Jeezy. It's just my chat. Yeah, so come to the first point, and then I need Orissa and Rodok to set up on the high ground here, where I am jumping around, like here. And especially in the meta right now, Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball is really bad in some instances in the current meta, but really, really good in others. And one of the ones where it's really good is um, try to place your shield like here, you know, facing me. Yeah. Perfect. And then Hawk, go to the Rissa. Yeah. Everyone come here. To me, where I'm swinging around. Nice. Alright. So, in many, many cases, I don't know how it is in, in e all ranks, but in I've seen in many ranks, people set up on this side with Orissa Hog, and maybe even a Bastion. So what do you want to do when you come out of spawn and you want to attack? You tell your team that you, they, they should wait. You go here. <laughs> you hide, exactly. You go here. And then many times they will try to hold you or use a hook on you. So you wait here for a bit to see if they will actually try to use the Orisa hold. If they don't use it, then you can just go for the boop and I will show you how that works. You roll up to here. You can grapple on the corner. Get momentum and then you boop them off. And that is really effective, I will show you again. Go back, guys go back. Don't boop this Orisa, I need to boop it. Hawk, go to the wrist again. And what's really important here is, if you boop them off like this, you can pile the earth, and those are easy kills for your team. Especially Wait, if you don't expect it. Can you show us where, where you're grabbing? Yes, I will show you in a second. Okay. <laughs> get up there again, get up there again. So there's different ways to do, do this grapple. I mean, there's usually like a bunch of ways to use every single grapple there is in the game. Um, but the one that I like to do is pretty straightforward. You just grapple anywhere here. You see that? Anywhere here. And then you roll around. You can see how, how it stops me automatically. And then you let go when you reach this point. So you walk here and then you roll into them. And I do that because I don't want to boop them to this way. Because then it's really hard for my team to engage because my team is usually sitting back down here. So if you boop them into this direction, then it's really easy for your team to kill them. And this, I swear to god, it has won me the first point so many times because there's a whole team up there. And then you boop like two or three off and they're completely surprised, they don't know what to do. Or Risa doesn't get back in time, she can't shield anyone and your team can just kill the tanks. And then from there you can just finish the rest of the team afterwards. So that's your, really cool. Does your boop um, dislodge a Bastion? Um, nope, unless he's out of turret form. So if they have a Bastion, for example, it's absolutely fine if you just boop the Orisa and the Rodog, because the Bastion is then up there all alone without a shield, and he will either panic and get out of ball, uh, a turret form and walk away and try to position better and then not deal any damage while you kill the tanks, 
Or you can just kill the tanks and ignore the Bastion. Or if you have a Hansa, for example, he might just kill the Bastion without a shield easily. So regardless that you can't boop him off, um, you can still win a fight like that. So let's try it out. Does, does your pile driver make Bastion fly up in the air? Or when um, nope, nope, also doesn't. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, completely immobile. But it still deals damage. So okay, let's try to boop. Um, okay, let's let's first try. Everyone try to boop. So make sure that there's always somebody standing there, either a ball, a hog, or a racer, so they can try to grapple. So first, blue team try to boop off the red team, and then the other way around. Oh, I didn't like go fast enough. <laughs> you got somebody up. Perfect. That was good. Appreciate it, Simon. Appreciate it. I'm sorry, I'm not talking to the chat too much today. But I'm so focused on this. We will talk later, guys. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, so you can How'd send you them own? flying quite a bit. And there is so many grapples like that where you can open up a point. For example, Paris is another example where you can win the first point by doing that. Um, yeah. This is like one of the most important ones, I would say, for sure. Nice, that was a really good one. And then before you land, and you see them land, like when they're in the air, you shouldn't pile drive, but when you s before they land, you can use your pile drive, so you can already like have them stuck in position um, w when they land, so you deal even more damage. I will show you some clips later if you have time um, that I collected where I did that, where that worked out for my team. Alright, everyone tried? Sweet. Then I guess you guys are ready for some more advanced boobs. Uh, uh, yeah. Everyone tried? No, the red team didn't get their turn yet. Okay, then red team, let's go. <laughs> and then blue blue wrecking balls, uh, get out of your ball form so you don't get pooped as far. So it's a bit more realistic. Nice. And also a little trick for space, Hammond has so much HP, so you're really good at dueling people in space, because they're so slow you can quite easily hit headshots where you deal a lot of damage. So it's absolutely fine if you duel people in space, and especially if you poop them away, it's really hard for them to disengage again. And when they are flying, they can't really fight back. So McCree's, Hansel's, all of that stuff really easy to fight in space. Nice. Really good grapples. Ah uh, yes, yeah, Stardust. Yeah, I will. Sh I will. Sh I will show you some uh, videos later or clips where I did that grapple, uh, in like actual real life ranked situations, and also a couple of other ones. So I don't have to explain it in the map, but you get the point anyway. Hi, Benji. All right. You can also grapple like this if you guys come down here. Come down again. I mean, for each grapple, there's like a million ways to use them. You can also grapple up to up to here. And then swing around. Oh wait, that was a bit scuffed. Up to here. Wait, where did you grab one? Can you show that again? Up there? I fucked it up anyway. No, I, I don't know how to do it. I failed. <laughs> I'd never do, I never used this grapple, but I know that other grapples work for this thing as well. Yeah, this one works too. But usually the one that I showed you is the easiest. I mean, also in general for wrecking. Going through a wall. Isn't that no. like you can jump over the wall sometimes. It, it's no, a bit, it's a bit scuffed. Yeah, so I wouldn't necessarily use it because for Wrecking Ball I like to keep grapples really simple because there is so many like YouTube videos and stuff w that I've watched where they showed all the fanciest grapples but it doesn't matter if you waste like 5 seconds on a grapple that you might miss try to go for the easiest, most straightforward grapple and it's gonna be bringing the most success for sure um, Then I will show you one advanced grapple and quickly talk about Sombra and then if you guys want to stick around I can show you some of my collected clips I have like a whole library of clips um, that show you like specific situations so I can explain better what I mean without having to switch lobbies all the time and to boast a bit with like nice ball plays basically <laughs> oh shit alright maps um, let me see 
Alright, let's try Li Zhang first. Because there's a bunch of grapples that I can show you. Depending on where we land. Alright, garden, that's perfect. So that's a um that's a really tricky one. Yeah, sure. Feel free, feel free. So yeah, uh, one trick, if you guys come to the pillar in the middle of the map and then follow me. You guys all here? Nice. Yeah. Follow me to this ledge here. So, without having to get gain speed, you can just simply jump over here. It feels dodgy, but it's actually, it works. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, so that's one thing. That's a little trick. And then come back to the position. Oh my god. It feels like you're gonna fall, but you're not, so. Yeah. So I need some wrecking ball to send up set up on this bridge and this bridge here. Then I will show you some really fancy grapples that just look really cool if you wanna get like a sick play of the game. I need a come here to this bridge here. Follow me, follow me. Yeah, this other bridge, yeah. I need one red wrecking ball to stand up here. Oops. <laughs> yeah, just stay there, just stay there. And the rest can come watch. Alright. Rest, come with me, come with me. Come here, okay. This angle here. Come on point, come on point. So, yeah. Sorry. Let's wait for rest. So once you jumped over this little edge there from the big health bag, like Amna just did, you can grapple onto this. Do you see this? My grapple here? Sorry. Yeah. And you can gain momentum to jump over the bridge. Come back a bit. Um, lay scene, come back. So I don't bump into you. Yeah. So you can use that momentum to jump over the bridge and then poop them off. See that? That's really good, especially at the start of the map. So many times when uh, people cross the bridge, you can get like a bunch of environmental kills like that on supports, for example. So what you want to do is you want to set up here, watch where the enemy team is going, and then you grapple here, jump, let go, and then poop them off. Come to the bridge, everyone. Come to the bridge. Without trying it at first. If you want to try, it's fine. Yeah, so. And then watch what I do after the boop. So if you get the boop, and you shoot over the target, that's absolutely fine. So if you jump here... Okay, wait, I failed it. I need to come back. Yeah, if you're about to fall, you can also use your power drive to land safely. Yeah, so you can... Grab here. And if you go too far, you can also jump here to be safe. Instead of like... You can basically use the momentum to jump this way here. And what you can also do, which is a bit more advanced, is this here. You can grapple onto the bridge and then jump and then jump back onto the bridge, dealing even more damage. Okay, this is a very advanced grapple, it's a bit risky, but it looks really cool, and if you want to try it out, go for it. You can try it now. Uh, I will try to stand on the bridge. It's really hard, not gonna lie, but... Oh no. <laughs> you have to jump when you leave the, when you leave the edge. Oh, okay. So you gain momentum, when you when you're burning, you jump, and then you let go. <laughs> so as soon as you get the momentum, you let go of the grapple. That would have been really good, ca uh, Carter and Pit, but uh, <laughs> you get pooped. Oh. <laughs> but you would have gotten it. I saw it. Nice. That was a good try. Yeah. Try to hold the grapple for as long as possible with, you know, here like grapple and then right before you leave the edge then you let go because if you let go too early you lose the the speed and you just land the bridge without speed and you can't poop anyone so you have to jump and let go this was good oh, it was really good yeah exactly you jump and you go i thought i should get out again it's kind of booped off meh This is something you can try out for fun later. Oh, that was really good. That was really good, Amna. Really good. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I nice. That was really good. Holy. Sadka, that was really sick. Especially with the 
save afterwards. Nice. Alright. I will show you one more that is really cool. Um, and then I can show you some clips for the rest of the grapples so we don't have to swap it all the time. Uh, let's go back to the lobby. Yeah, but those are the ones that you can practice if you want. I will show you the coolest one in my opinion. That is the hardest to do, but um, it looks really cool. I don't know. It's for the style points. Oh yeah, sure, wait. Um, who do we want to swap in? Uh, Disney, I guess. Alright. Sure. Sweet. Alright. Whoever can do this grapple, um, I don't know. Think of, yes. think of, think of, think <laughs> of, think of like a cool reward. But uh, if anyone managed to do that, I would be so impressed. All right, everyone, come to this first point. Actually, come a bit with me. Yeah, over here. Follow me. Follow me. So yeah, this is the hardest grapple I've ever done, I think. So what you want to do? Get behind me so I can grapple. Get behind me. Get here. Here. I'm jumping. Nice. So, what you want to do is you want to grapple somewhere close to this window, right? You want to swing through this door. See me? Yeah. And then come here. Come here. You also want to grapple close to the window. And then you guys can set up here. Oh, you're going to boop them forward from there? No, no, no. I will show you a different one. So what you can do is... I'm not sure if I can do it first try, especially with the pressure, but <laughs> I will try. So yeah. Okay, I couldn't. Wait, let me try again. This one. Yes. And it only works because it's not far enough with your grapple, so you have to prolong the jump of your pile drive or else you will not hit it. So this is by far the hardest grapple I've ever done, I think. Um, so yeah. Try, if, if you ever manage that, please clip it and send it to me. I would be so impressed. You can try it forever in the private lobby, I don't care. But if you ever do that, I'm so impressed. It's actually a really useful grapple as well. I, I think people should go back on the right side and then... Um, so so, like so yeah. what you do basically, <laughs> what you do basically is you grapple. At first, you basically hold forward key to go through the door, right? And then you hold left key and forward key at the same time to get some some height and also momentum and then you let go while you're aiming at the bridge and before you reach the bridge you press pile drive and forward key as well uh, and you have to do the that was really good oh my god that was really good that was really really good yeah um i have done it once without pile drive but it's really hard yeah, yeah so whoever gets that grapple ever i don't know think of a reward and um, <laughs> i'll make sure it happens yeah, alright, um, and then one last grapple that is really useful, that is quite easy to do. Everyone come to first point. <laughs> that is definitely guaranteed, if you manage to do that. Um, okay, I need um, a red wrecking ball to come up here, or two red wrecking balls. Come up here, yeah. And the rest, they need to follow me. Actually, I should make. I will. I will make a Twitter post um, and a Reddit post where I show this um, this grapple, and then I will make a competition. And whoever gets it, I will think of something cool. Um, yeah. So there is a little trick that you can use. For example, if let's let's pretend those wrecking balls are um, Hog and Orisa again, okay? Because it's another classic, or like a Reinhardt Zarya, right? They usually set up there and defend the point. So what you can do is. You can go left side into the small health bag room. Follow me. Just so you don't take too much damage. Get in there. Heal up a bit. And then what you can do is like you grapple on the lower part of the bridge. Everyone watch that. I will hold the grapple. Chad says, I've done this grapple but in a private lobby. If there is no video to it, I don't believe it. sorry it didn't happen. Yo, thank you so much for all the bits. That's insane. That's insane, actually. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, once you grappled here, everyone sees it. Okay, nice. Yeah. You can swing around. I will show you how it looks in in motion. And then you can push them off and pile of them. And this is the number one best way to get rid of a whole bunker comp 
Because your team is usually positioned there, and if you tell them you're gonna boop them into the team, they will wait there and it's gonna be guaranteed kills. It's 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 one of the best grapplers on this map. I only figured it out recently, I don't know why, but it's so good, it's so good. Yeah. It's a bit tricky. That's really good. So you, you have to jump. So what you do is you grapple. You grapple and then you jump up here. Like before you before you reach Yeah, that's good. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Exactly. I think I'm gonna buy this Hammond plush thingy that everyone wants, yeah. and then if someone gets the grapple, I'm gonna send it to that person. I think that's what it'll be called, cool, cool, uh, cool competition. <laughs> I like that. I like that idea. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I did it great the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, but at least someone is having fun with it then. Yeah. There's also another grapple that is probably the second hardest, but I think I will stick with this one because this one also. No, actually, I will show. Yeah. Maybe I use a different one as well. And whoever can do either um, will get the plush. Alright. You all got the hang of it, more or less. And then, okay. No, it's not a chunker turn one. It's on, it's on King's Row. First point to jump into the window from spawn. It's, it's, it's insane as well. Okay, everyone, set up here. Come with me, like where, where I'm standing, where I'm swinging right now. Come here. Yep. So, one of the main reasons, one of the main tasks of Wrecking Ball is to go for Widowmakers and stuff like that, just because you can get. Get to all high grounds basically. So this high ground you saw, you can reach it through here. You can, if you're set up there, you can also grapple here. Like there's so many ways to reach this high ground. As one of the only people um, in your team, most like most cases, because even a diva doesn't always reach it fast enough. So, can I get a widowmaker as well? Someone. Uh, Can't even yeah. remember which spawn I started at. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Just try it both. <laughs> Eventually, we'll find the right one. Wait, I just got... What just happened? So many bits, holy... Alright, nice. So, here it's really awkward to try to get a pile drive, like this. Yeah, you can do that, and then like, fly up again and then pile drive. But this is exactly why I try to use my pile drive um, from this like little jump that I showed you, right? So, exam for example, if you jump up here, and you wait here, and then the Widow grapples up there. After the Widow used the grapple, she's a one-shot. So you can wait, she grapples, and then you know she has no disengagement mechanism, so you can just do this. And then shoot her like that. And this is, yeah, this, this trick here is like... <laughs> worth it. But yeah, this is, this is, why, you, this is why you need this, uh, this grapple jump. So you're saying wait until the Widow grapples up there and then yeah. use all of that on her? Exactly. Sometimes the Widow trolls me, um, so sometimes the Widowmaker jumps down. And tries to bait my pile drive like this, and then when I pile drive, she grapples up. See that? Perfect. And when I pile drive, she grapples up. So make sure you know the cooldown on the Widowmaker grapple. For example, okay, jump down, and then jump back up, up again. So she grapples, I fail my pile drive, right? And then I have to get back up, and then I can only shoot her, I don't have a pile drive ready. So sometimes I would just jump down and fake my pile drive. I mean, that's a bit advanced, but yeah, sometimes I would just like. See? And then she wastes the grapple, I jump up, and then I pile drive. And then from there it's easy kill. That's a little trick. And then one quick tip for Zombra. Always try to shoot a Zombra. Zombra is a good counter to Wrecking Ball. But if you play Dive for example and your whole team approaches fast, Zombra is pretty useless. Zombra is only good if your team is slow and uncoordinated. If you approach at the same time, the Zombra can't really hack more than one person at the same time. Hack can get interrupted quite easily by damage. And if she can't hack because she's constantly taking damage or pressure, then she can only shoot and the damage from Summer's guns is pretty high, but not as high as other DPS and it's not really worth it. Um, so yeah, always try to shoot a Sombra, yeah, that's really good. So if she tries to hack me and I shoot her, it interrupts the hack, that's one thing. Sombras in general, if she hacked somebody else, you can go in for engage. Okay, Sombra, come, come on here. 
Nice. So what you never want to do against the Sombra is jump really high. If you jump really high, she has plenty of time to hack you. See that? Compared to if you do this. If you do this. And then, see that? I jumped lower, and while I was jumping, I shot her, so she can't use the hack. And then before I landed, I used my pile drive, so she will never be able to get a full hack off. Or, you can like fake engage, where you try to hack me. You do this, she hacks me, I fall back to my team. I will survive, and then I know she has hack cooldown, and I can just engage again. Those are the tricks for Sombra, so it doesn't necessarily count the hamster, but it's definitely very, very annoying. But then again, Sombra is a really good counter, so to say, for almost all main tanks anyway. Because if you're Reinhardt and you get hacked, you're useless. If you're Rissa, you get hacked, you're useless. So, yeah, just a short uh, insight on how to play against Sombra. It does work. It's not a throw if you play Hammon against Sombra, but it's it's definitely hard. Um, and it's not really enjoyable, I have to say. So don't one chick like me learn other heroes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, that's. I mean, I hate Sombra in general, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, the problem with Sombra is that is this in in lower ranks where people are a bit uncoordinated and um, you know, if you EMP, it, yeah, exactly, it's, that is one thing. But at the same time, it's not as effective as in higher rank. For example, if you EMP in lower ranks, first of all, people are not really grouped up as six all the times because there's people staggering, people not joining the team fight. It's just a bit uncoordinated, you know. They come from spawn, they walk to the fight without waiting for the team. So if you EMP, you don't really get the whole team, that's one thing, so it's not as effective. And also, even if you get a lot of people EMP'd with Sombra, usually the follow-up is not as coordinated. If you say like, oh, EMP'd, people are like, oh, what will we attack, where do we attack? But in, in GM, for example, if, if there is an EMP, you can be sure it's a teamfight win in 99% of the cases, so yeah. That's why it's a bit hard to balance Sombra, that's just my, like, my JSON it, basically. But, um... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Is there any question left? Anything you want to know? Anything you want to try? Before all happy? Before we quit, can I just get a group photo of all of us? Do it, do it. <laughs> like, like all, so all of the, the students down here, like, around the edge, and then you, like, swinging from the pillar up there. <laughs> sure. Stardust, if you could get a picture of that. Um, oh yeah, saying? that's a good question real quick before we do it. Um, Counters to Hammond. I think the best, the counter, so to say, is probably um, Sombra. And then there's a couple of heroes that can contest Wrecking Ball really well. For example, a Mei can slow down a Wrecking Ball's speed so he can't really disengage. So against Mei, what you want to do is stay on distance, shoot her as much as possible and she, until she used her, like, um, you know, the prison thingy or like the ice block. And once the ice block is used, you can engage on her like any other squishy and shoot her down quite easily. So hold your range and then try to uh, force the prison and then you go in after that. That's Mei. Uh, in general, you, I don't think you want to counter pick Wrecking Ball. The best way to counter Wrecking Ball is to stay together and once he engages, you all attack him at the same time or you all ignore him. If you split up your focus, that's exactly what Wrecking Ball wants. Um, logistics kind of question. If you find left control difficult, use Power F. I don't know, I've never really switched from the standard controls, I have to say. Any good healers? Mm -hmm. So, uh, my chat asked, what about McCree and his stun? So, it's the same with like Ana Sleep, which also answers your questions, which healers are good against Wrecking Ball. As I said, you don't necessarily want to counter Wrecking Ball by, with hero picks, because for example, if you play Zombra and, and Mei, it might, may counter the, uh, the Hammond, for example. But if what if your team that plays Hammond also plays Fair Mercy, what are you going to do then? Then you're pretty useless with, to the rest of the, the enemy team. A team always consists of six people, uh, as stupid as that sounds. It makes a difference. If you all try to counter pick one hero, then the rest of the enemy team might be able to counter pick your team in return. Um, like yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. That's that's a pretty good example. Um, so what works against Hammond healer wise, Brick is pretty good because it can stop the momentum when you try to roll through her. She can stun you. That's one thing. Um, Ana is pretty good if you hit the sleep, which is pretty reliable because Wrecking Ball is just a fat ball and easy to hit basically. Um, what else? When it comes to McCree and his stun, same with Arna Nate, um, you can either jump in to, you know, um, counter the McCree or like force out the cooldown. But since the McCree flashbang is so with such a short cooldown, it's not really worth like trying to force it out. But if you see him use it on somebody else, you can just engage and kill him quite easily when he's used it. Like there's nothing he can do about it because he can't roll in the air. And that's how you approach most heroes. You either want to force out the cooldowns when you engage on them 
or you want to wait until they use it and then you just engage in them. Um, yes, I showed them how to pile drive on flat ground, yeah. yeah. Um, one area to focus on primarily. I think the most important um, thing for Hammond is definitely movement. And then when it comes to ability timing, I can also tell you one thing. Um, so now I reduce the cooldowns for grapples and pile drive. But in general, pile drive is quite a long cooldown. It's like 8 or 9 seconds, I'm not entirely sure. But it's definitely uh, quite some time. So it might be worth it using it on like one a diva for example just for extra damage but in most cases it's it's worth saving it and not always using it when in the air like you want to use it as often as possible with as much value as possible so if you can use it for example on if you see a diva alone yes you can use it but a diva doesn't care too much about 120 150 damage whereas if you save it and you attack like two other people instead the next time when they're clumped up and you have saved it from that one engage in a diva where you just shot with your guns, then you can get much more value and also much more old charge. And using your pile drives and your grapples effectively for damage is the way to you can fast you can fast charge your ultimates. You can get like a lot, a lot of ultimate charge really, really fast. Like I usually charge an ultimate between 40 and 60 seconds, which is really, really fast. It depends on enemy comp, of course, and how they play it, but um, I've seen Hammonds that take like three minutes for an ult charge and for one ult, and that's way too slow. So yeah. If you optimize your movement, that really helps with your ultimate as well. And the rest really comes with like practice. I guess Hammond is one of those things, one of those heroes that need a lot of um, movement practice and mechanical skill, um, in addition to like game sense, and that's why I like it so much, because there's so many things you can do with it. Um, yes, Hammond has a grapple, uh, has a melee, I mean. Is it not bound? It's, it's bound. Yeah, he? It has a melee. Yeah, that's another trick. So if you piled off somebody and then you shoot their head and then they barely survive, I just usually finish them off with a with a with a quick melee. So get used to using your melees after a pile off engage. That's really really important because melee does like what 60 damage, 40 damage. I don't know. I don't know the exact numbers actually. It's pretty pretty sad. But usually when you jump for on a widow, for example, quickly use the melee before you before like, uh, she gets away with like low HP and yeah 30 damage and then. That should guarantee the kill. Alright, any other questions? If not, then I will invite you all to just come to my stream and then I will show you the clips that I collected um, for different scenarios and grapples and stuff. And picture time, of course, yes. <laughs> Alright, picture time. What do you guys want to set up? On the bridge? And I have some really, really cool highlights. Just so get you guys excited. But yeah, it's really cool. Okay, so what we can do is you guys can set up on the bridge. And I will try to swing like, like here, just like that. And then if you screenshot at the right time while I'm above you guys, <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. So whoever wants to take the the picture, feel free. So who wants to do? Start us. Is spectating. She should give me a shot. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna swing here. And it oh wait. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Try not to be in my range. <laughs> You have a really really cool <laughs> chat. Yes, yeah, I have a really really cool chat. That's true. If you want to join my my stream, I have a really really nice community there as well. <laughs> and maybe also chat if um, the girls from my chat. If you guys want to join the their their Discord server and their clan or um, community as well, it's an all girls clan that focuses on like friendly environments, you know, positive atmosphere, and helping out each other, playing together, and just having a good time. <laughs> All right. So who wants to take the pictures? Anyone taking the picture? Anyway? I think, think Sardis got it. Yeah. Sardis, so you got good. it. Okay. Can we all hit our ult at the same time? Yes. Please. Okay. I'm gonna say three, two, one, ult. Okay. So everyone hit Q when I say ult. And then I will pile up you guys. <laughs> okay. Three. I'm gonna ruin two, it. <laughs> one ult. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Holy. That's insane. <laughs> oh my god. That made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that was so sick. <laughs> yeah, my my chat is really friendly. All right, the chaos starts. <laughs> that was great. All right, um, so I will post my Twitch link in chat real quick. Um, it's gonna be this here. Some promotion for my stream as well. It's Twitch uh, slash Ventari underline. Um, okay. I usually stream. Hmm? Yeah, I'll switch over to your screen now, Ventari. 
Yeah, I think it makes more sense if you all switch over to the stream because then I can show you the clips properly. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun for me. I'm, I think it, it's really cool what you guys do. Uh, keep it up. And I'm going to send the girls from my chat to you guys uh, whenever they want to play with somebody. And yeah. Really organized stuff. Pretty so cool. Much. You were super awesome. Sure, really sure. No worries, no worries. Yeah, I hope it was somewhat educational. Absolutely. And yeah. And fun. <laughs> nice. I mean, this hero is just absolutely awesome. And in lower ranks, it's such a hard carry if you know how to play it properly. <laughs> exactly. And then keep in mind, I'm gonna host this challenge for the grapple. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna set something up for that. And if uh, whoever gets it, yeah, gets the plush. Yeah. So I'll see you guys in stream. Uh, I'm gonna tap out for now, and then I will share my screen with you guys, and then you can see the the grapples and the highlights. Hey, Ventari. Yes. This is Stardust. Yo, I hey. just wanted to ask you really quick. Do you mind if after we your stream ends, if I save your perspective from your channel? I didn't want to do it without asking your Oh, that's that's absolutely fine. Sure, no worries. No worries. Awesome. Thanks. I appreciate Go for it. it. I will... What's the program you use for that? Sorry, Ventari asked if you meant to give me that. Yeah, same. I, I would like to know. Yeah, say so I will send, or I can post it, or actually, hold on. But how do you get it in the first place? Is it like a software? Because it was like a stream leech or a Twitch leech, but I don't know how exactly yeah, how it works. It is. One moment. Plushy challenge. Yeah, it's going to be plushy challenge. HD Converter Factory. Okay. HD Video Converter Factory. Okay, nice. I just Googled it and it was a random one I found. <laughs> okay, nice. As long as it works, I guess. Yeah, so I will yeah. try not to forget not to delete the VOD because usually, I don't know, when it's not like a ranked VOD, I delete it, but I will. <laughs> Please remind yeah, me. I'll, and I'll then you can download it. I'm gonna be in your stream right now, so I'll grab it from you as soon as I see that you're done, so that I can have it, and then um, I'll just mostly be using the portion with the video, uh, the class. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Sounds good. All awesome. right. I'll see you in stream. All right, I will see you guys in stream. I'm gonna Yay. leave the game now, and Bye, also the Thank server. You so much. Thank All you right. for joining. Enjoy, us. enjoy, have fun. Yep. All right. So first of all, thank you guys so much for all the bids. That's insane. Like that's actually insane. I just I can only scroll through it now. I'm sorry I couldn't really talk to you guys that much because I was really focused on that. I wanted to make sure to get a good experience from from the coaching and stuff because they really put in a lot of effort, and um, yeah. And if I talk to chat, it would just you know mess things up. So I wanted to keep that really, really organized. <laughs> Hi you guys. All right, let me open my my montage thingy. Let me see. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. You think about forgiving me? Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> Welcome, you guys. Alright, um, let me share my screen with you. Perfect. That looks a bit trippy, but we'll clean it. Alright, um, let me see. So, I have a lot of clips saved because there was a montage. I had a quick promotion thing, I and mean, it doesn't really help me too much, but if you guys wanna see it, um, there is a montage that has like the best clips included, this one here. Um, if you guys want to watch it, feel free. That's where all the best clips are, but if you just want to watch some educational clips, I will show you from my from my folder here. Yo, thanks for the follows. And I almost stream every day, so if you guys want to check it out. feel If you have any questions, you can just ask me anyway. Alright, so... Um, this is probably... Is that it? No, that's not it. Let me see. Where is it? Yo, thanks for the, thanks for the bits. Yeah, feel free to join this as well. So this is probably so we did, we did this grapple earlier, right? Where we grappled on Sanctum and pushed him off. This is probably by far the biggest play I've ever done. So it was already overtime, we were about to lose this, they wanted me to swap off Hammond, they were already complaining, me, 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 swap the Hammond, we need a shield, you know, you know the drill, guys, you know the drill. Um, oh, thanks for the, for the program. Yeah, it's really cool. Thanks. Thanks for the bits. So yeah. Oh, it's really loud. I, I hope it's somewhat decent quality. So I go down there, I grapple, I get three people. It's really reliable as well. And then here, I use my ultimate just so to clear the space. Yeah, and that was probably the biggest play I've ever done. It doesn't always look like that, guaranteed, but uh, it's a pretty cool thing to do. And it's 
reasonably reliable. You know, thank you so much for all the new followers. Um, let me see what else is there. I can also ah, I've a better idea. I just go to my stream. I go to clips. Da. All right. Yeah. So it always looks like that for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that's another one. Um, that, um, that was actually my top 500 game last season, so I was like close to top 500 and last season the first time I got it. Um, yeah, so I don't know why they did that, but they were <laughs> just walking up like that. So that's really satisfying. Like, that made me so happy. And those were not bad players, like it's Fopson and ex-contenders players and some other people that are really high up. Um, let me see. Then also, another really cool trick is comboing EMP with pile drive. So here, I tell my team this. And then we can, do we have, have okay. boss ready? Do we have wait, 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 wait for the boss. Wait for the boss. And then we can EMP mindful. This is gonna be huge, boys. I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna boys it. It's gonna be so insanely huge. You have no idea. Oh, I love yeah. this play. Give me, give me one second. I have it. Are you ready? Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, needless to say, I was a bit excited about this one. Yo, what? That's so nice. That's so nice. Oh my god, thank you so much. That, oh my god, it's so nice. That feels like a kabachi host, holy. <laughs> it's insane. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, here, the, the bridge grapple. I will show you this one. That's another classic. So yeah, you grapple here. I watch until they pass. They wasted. They wasted their sleep dart. I got two booped off, and then I also get the Zarya. That's fucking mega. Fresh nuts. Yeah, I have. I mean, I played so much Overwatch with Hamster. So that's another one that shows you the the, the bridge poop. Um, let me see. That's another classic. And by the way. There is a reason I was streaming in a suit. I don't always stream in a suit, but it was because they released this new uh, Hammond skin. So I decided I want to stream in a suit to, you know, celebrate it properly. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much for the new followers and also for the subs. That's insane. Leave your job, be a full-time streamer. <laughs> nice. I just got a job. Now I should tell him, oh, by the way, I'm going to be a streamer now. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so this is the other grapple that I showed you guys. In GM as well. So it's not like some, some, some you know, some bots. It's actually good players. And boom. And then you clear up. And that's an easy first point take. And this is this really takes you the that gives you the point like almost right away, right? Um let me see. Mm. Then, um, <laughs> let me see if there is some other ones that are important. Because I want to show you, I mean, there are some really fun plays, but I want to show you the most important ones first. <laughs> Especially environmental kills. I guess I'll just go to this one here. So, um, a really good combo is, oh yeah, that, that's a really cool one as well. I'm sorry, I know it's the light theme. I know it is. <laughs> so here you can grapple around and then actually I don't know why they stood there, but Yep. That was in a low rank though. Mm. Oh Aces overtime quintuple kill. That is a really com nice combo as well. <laughs> oh my god. So if you set up an EMP with a pile drive, you can hold them in position. So you see, they wanted to disengage from this diva bomb. But because of the pile drive, they couldn't. <laughs> Only because. <laughs> And also, for example, if the Hanzo shoots a dragon somewhere, you can pile drive the enemy team so they're stuck in the dragon. That's another thing. 
but that takes some coordination as well. Um, you yeah, know, thanks for the bits. That's another classic um, on, on what it's called. Night Market, exactly. A really easy boop as well. This one here. So this is why Hammond is really good, um, especially against uncoordinated teams or people that don't know about those boops, because they would walk up there, um, and then you can easily boop them off there. Um, let me see what else do I have. I have so many. I just I don't want to like spam you with like stuff that doesn't have any relevance. Mm. Is that the one? Oh, that's not the one. Actually. Let's go through my folders for now. Um, where's my stuff? Yeah, so that's a lot. I have a lot of material for that as well. Um, let me see. Is that it? No. Mm -hmm. Give me one sec. I have so much stuff there. I need to find radiant art. Oh, I know what it is. It's videos, I think. Because then I have all the most important boops here. There we go. Yeah, this one is good. This is perfect. Um, that's another one. Those are like set up boops because this this is going to be a video for, for YouTube. So obviously that all happened in a custom lobby with people that I told to actually walk there, but just to give you an idea on the most important grapples, I will just quickly go through that. You did the hard grapple? Wait, what? Did you? No. Did you actually? Do you have a video as well? That's one. Um, I will show you the second one on King's Row. Wait, where is it? Um, King's Row. Is that it? Nope, it's not it. If you guys can do... No, not that one. Not that one. Yeah, if you guys can do this grapple as well, I will think of something cool to give you guys as well. You took a video? Okay. If you if you have that, send it to me um, in my Discord. Just I will I will actually. I'm gonna set up a new channel called Highlights, or not Highlights, um, Challenge or something, and then you can post it there. And if a couple of people get it, then I will just um, have a raffle or something to like randomly draw one person. Nice. You all got the grapple. That's insane. If you get that one, I would be very impressed as well. This one is probably one of the hardest as well, because it's so hard to hit the window with the powder. Yeah, if you if you guys get that one as well. So I, okay, let's let's put it like that. If you get the first one, you get put in the raffle. But I will write rules down in my Twitter or something. Um, and if you get both, if only one person gets both of those grapples, I think then I will just give it away to that person. I will show you again. So you grapple onto the statue, then you go here, and before you hit the window, you pile drive to get more momentum to go in there, but it's pretty hard. <laughs> so yeah, if let's say we own, okay, let's, let's, let's do that, like that. I'm gonna have only the first grapple, because this one is a bit too advanced, I think. Um, and still, whoever gets this one, send it to me, because I would be honestly, like, I would be so impressed if anyone can pull off both those grapples. One last time, and then I will show you some other grapples real quick. How much time? I don't know. Uh, I will just set it up first, and then I will post it on Twitter, my Discord, and every all my socials uh, for this challenge. And then out of that, we will see. I will set a timeline. I don't know, maybe like two, three weeks or something. I don't know. It also takes me some time to order some stuff. I'm not sure what I want to give away, but I'm going to do a giveaway for sure. Um, let me see. What's another grapple that you need to know? Oh yeah, I know one that's pretty cool as well. Um, this one here is also classic. See that one? I will show you again. So you basic grapple here. 
See, you grapple here, and then you can swing around. It's this left side pillar, swing around, and pop them off. Easy. Easy. You can't be more impressed than me after seeing you play Ana. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit sad. That's why I'm a ball one trick. Or specialist, as they say. Um, let me see. That's a lot of, That's the one I was talking about. Can I play once more? Yeah, I will. I will send. So for the two grapples that I wanna, I wanna do for the challenge, or basically the one plus the bonus grapple, I'm gonna post them on my Twitter or Discord or whatever. Um, just so you guys can rewatch it over and over again, so you can see what exactly I'm doing, so you can replicate it. Can you remember your life before ball? No, I don't think I was born. One dinner with Antari. I mean, it's an all girls Discord server. Nah, nah. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Thanks for the for the follow. <laughs> Um, also, I'm not sure if you would like my cooking anyway. So there we go. So when the dive tanks jump up there, you see the jump, I push them into the tunnel, and then when they try to disengage, you hold it. Yo, Byvin, what's up? See, you can body block them, and then your team can kill them. Um, what else? This is also pretty good grapple for... Um, First point of, of Paris. It's a bit awkward because you bump against the pillar, but it still works. So you want to grapple. I will show you, I will pause it. Yeah, so Paris is by far not my, my favorite map at all. So you grapple in the top left uh, corner of this one here, and then you roll around, and you bump against the wall, and you push them off, and you pile drive. And if that's not a team wipe, then I don't know what is. Mm. So yeah, this is why ball is actually pretty good against um, bunker comps. That's another classic, if they're set on the high ground, you can swing around and poop them into your team. Yeet. I'll show you again. You did the king's row grapple? Did you record it? Did you? Yeah, so you grapple, oh, oops. You grapple here, this corner. Yeah, I don't like Paris either, I have to say. And there we go. It looks nice. But it's not that nice. It's not that nice to play. Um, yeah, this is also a really, really important one. So what you want to do is you want to roll from spawn to here. And then usually, the, like when you're below them, they might hear you, right? I did it to made a screenshot. Screen <laughs> you're such a troll, man. You're such a, such a troll. I made a screenshot of what? Of you sitting in the window. What? <laughs> That's actually hilarious. Oh my god, you're such a memer. Yeah, so usually the Ana or whatever might defend here, might see you, and they might go for a sleep dart or a nade, so you want to dodge that. There is a sleep, you dodge it, and then you tell your team there's going to be flying enemies, and then you powder off, and that's how you win the first point when they use the high ground defense. So right out of spawn, go left side. I'm going to give away, I'm, I'm giving away all of my secret strategies here, but I mean, I hope nobody in, from my ranked games is watching. Because I do those all the time, and they are so effective. Right. Mm, what else do we have? What's that one? I mean, that's just a small one. Yeah. So you see, you don't always get the perfect boot, but it still works. Nice. Um, let me see, what else is there? Hollywood second stage, what's that? Yeah, this is a good one if you want to get through the enemy team and break the bunker comp. So again, let's show it slowly. You grapple here, and then you try to swing as straight as possible while uh, having your momentum. Yeah, yeah, surface, yeah, yeah, I know you're trolling. Some people might think you're actually not trolling and then they think I'm rude, but don't take him too seriously, guys. Oh, this is a really fun one. Uh, not this one, this one. That's, that just looks really cool. I've, like, actually yesterday I had a ranked game in top 500, and there was a Reinhardt that wanted to cross the bridge, I booped him off, he came back from spawn and I booped him again. Same grapple. He, he walked over the bridge, I booped him, <laughs> and then I rewatched the video because one of his teammates were streaming, and I rewatched the video and the Reinhardt was so mad. And then he went through castle because he was so upset. Uh, Rialto Bridge is another one I can show you. 
yeah, Rialto Bridge is a good example. Wait, um, Rialto. So what do you want to do first? First of all, you. Oh, uh, something that I didn't really talk about is when you're in ball form, you have more, la more sight around you, so you can tilt your camera to look around angles or around around corners. So stay in ball form, look around corners without making too much noise, and then you see where they are. Then you know, oh, they play Orissa, no, they play Reinhardt, they play Hog. Okay, good. Then you wait until they go to the payload. And also, usually you have a wall here, right? It's a stone wall. So make sure you clean that before the, the fight starts. And then from there, you can go for bridge boobs. Yeah, and this is the, the grapple, um, the powder finish that I was talking about. The powder and then melee combo. Paris and more was Gaia Anubis Horizon. What? That's a lie. So yeah, pile off back up, and then melee, and then finish off. <laughs> That's true. I mean, you were my what is it called? Test experiment bunny. Mm, let me see. For root, there is a really good one to boop them off the off the high ground if they're on a the gas station. You can either go all the way around like that. <laughs> Surface is so small. And that's the second one. Let's use some volume as well. So as you can see, one of the main tasks for Wrecking Ball is definitely to disposition enemies uh, in, the, in, in a way that your team can easily follow up. Um, let me see. I think that those are the most important ones pretty much. Hollywood, Horizon, Lunar, Lijang. I mean, there's so many more grapples. Yeah, the second one is definitely better, um, but it's not as reliable because the second one gives you a weird angle. So you don't really boop them into your team, you boop them more to the small health pack. But both works really. Um, what's that one? Oh, it's, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, quickly close the stream. And just so it's like a one video, right? And then from there, uh, I'm gonna restart my stream and then I'm gonna play some more on my main account probably, or maybe on my Smurf, I will go on my Smurf account, uh, play some bit, a bit. If you guys wanna watch, feel free. I'm currently in like, I think low-ish GM. So I would say probably 4.1 or something. <laughs> yeah, they're just memers. But they're part of the community, they're really nice. Don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to restart the stream. So um, the Death Blossom server has the whole video to download without any additional material. And then I'm going to, once it's restarted, I will go straight into ranked. So you guys can watch that in action if you want. Now that I'm properly warmed up with all my grapples. So yeah, yeah, it's currently at 4.1. It's not too high. Um, I'm going to chill in this account. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, also just join my Discord, join um, or follow me on Twitter, ask me there, always available. And yeah, have fun. And I'm going to be back in like, I don't know, 30 seconds. I don't know how long it takes to restart the stream. All right, see you in a sec. <laughs> He's such a troll, man. Be right back.